You should break down these words and analyze the content. But I swear, things will not be the same on this continent. I suggest that y'all prepare your domes before we dive first into this intellectual zone. See, I cannot please all of y'all all the time. Some get caught up in aesthetics instead of checking the mind. But if you look deep, you'll find the science in these lines transcends space and times. I cross lines that we put ourselves in to separate from the each other. Is it the American dream now to kill your brother? Cutthroat and block and play a hate? All part of this process called individuate. Believe that and seal your fate. That's why we're here to resuscitate. Now what? Some got beef with words I choose to use to express my anguish. Man, I can speak proper English. And ebonics. I could speak Spanish too. I could even speak sign language just for you. See, there's many different ways to express my point of view. It's the whole point of my life to try to break through. Mental chains that been holding us like handcuffs, connecting us to each other in the back of the bus. See, there's really no difference in the game. We might look different, but the bottom line's the same. Now, I wanted to talk to you about Sustainable America as a global block perspective. This is my idea. Um, sheerly from experiences of how I think our evolution is going to happen across the Americas. But I started off with a rap because for me, the foundation of change comes from hip hop. Our culture of hip hop is the foundation of change in that we have already had recycling as part of our community. It's called a remix. <laughs> I learned, for example, about energy conservation because of poverty. Uh, we had a company in New York, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and the company was called Con Edison. Yeah, well, uh, I recall my mama yelling at me, we're not related to Con Edison, shut the lights. And that was my journey about energy conservation. How we get to the places that we find common ground is not so important. But that we do know and we do recognize that we have common ground is what's most important. Now, I start off with hip hop because hip hop for me is the culture of innovation, creativity, and activism. We represent the voices of the communities that we come from. We represent the idea that we can transform public space with simply our imagination. So imagine open spaces, open ideas, New York City, a cardboard box on a sidewalk, and that sidewalk transforms into a dance studio. So we know already in our culture, in our community of hip hop, that we can see tomorrow and that we can see the unification of our community. But we also know that we have challenges and the obstacles that face us, and that's the core of hip hop. There are no obstacles. Tell me no and we'll go over, under, around, and hit you from every angle, like Method Man says. So I wanted to share, too, about our vision of the foundation of this Sustainable Americas initiative. Now, you all seen in, your, in, in the world, people say, uh, think globally, act locally. You're hearing lots of wonderful ideas transmitted via the internet every day about global ideas and how we can help the global community. And yet, sometimes, we overlook the conversations affecting our hemisphere. So I'll give you an example. Television. Television emerged, very few people had the first sets of big TVs, and your neighbors would come visit and watch television with you. And so the early forms of technology were community-based because people really just didn't have access to them. Now imagine if you're living in your street, your block, your neighborhood, and you have electricity, and none of your neighbors have electricity. Over time, you should not be uh, Surprise when neighbors start showing up at your house in the evening because who wants to go to sleep at 6.30? Yet somehow, as America stands here on this block that we call the Americas, we see people coming to visit us, walking here, who don't have electricity. Now, as a cultural envoy with the State Department, I've had first-hand knowledge of communities all throughout the hemisphere, Central America, South America. And one of the most profound dynamics that I've found is that Americans throughout the hemisphere know that they are Americans. We, as citizens of the United States of America, assume that we dominate that title. Yet when they celebrate Day of the Americas, or in Spanish, Dia de las Americas, they're celebrating in every other country except 
the United States of America. So I'm standing in an in a, in a, in a Afro-indigenous community in Honduras. And I'm sitting on the beach, and we're having local bitters, which is uh, moonshine if you're from the States. And this brother says to me in Spanish, Mira, hermano, yo soy African-Americano. Listen, brother, I'm African-American. And he's sitting there speaking Spanish, never left Honduras. But he had me stumped because I hadn't thought of this until that point. You are, aren't you? African-American, Central America, right. Of course, common knowledge. Yet somehow, we tend to not see ourselves across the diaspora as Americans. And the value of what this hemisphere can be when we start doing these things like sharing ideas and sharing technologies. So I'm not a designer, I'm a thinker. I'm not an architect, I'm a visionary. And I could definitely say I'm an activist. And I'll tell you what activist means. It means we activate. It means we get things going and we don't stop until it's done. And then when it's done, we continue going. And that's what activism is. And so I'm trying to talk to these people down in other parts of the world, in our own hemisphere, about what they imagine the American dream is or isn't. Now, I grew up with the American dream imposed on us. And it wasn't a dream that was, was given to us in terms of here are some tools and maybe you can develop something for yourselves. You know, this idea called manifest destiny. You can actually shape your future. I always grew up thinking that the American dream, and I'm coming from the block, the global block perspective. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. There was no picket fence and lawns. So the American dream, house, picket fence, lawn, 2.5 kids, whatever it is. And I'm thinking, wow, now what happens if you have no house, no land, no property? What happens if you have no access to technology? What happens in communities that don't have electricity? Okay, it's really hard to imagine someone else's dream imposed on you as something that you can attain. And that is not the birthright of being an American. And I mean that now as a citizen of the United States of America. It used to be the case that you can imagine a future and make it happen. Now, it's kind of the case where I'm not sure. I don't know where to go. Uh, where government is using old models of, of how we govern, and yet young people know the innovations are happening. We're sharing and changing the world even if it's not recognized. And what does that mean to the individual where you are on your own land? It means the idea of the American dream is we can actually share tools, resources, knowledge, love, and community to help people grow their futures where they live in their own on their own land of the, of, in the Americas. That's amazing. That's powerful. That's something totally different than what I grew up thinking was possible for our, our future. The Americas. Now, I want to redefine a couple of pieces because as a political scientist, I know that there's a difference between local activist, local activism, and there's a difference between what government does. And so I wanted to redefine sustainability. Sustainability is not just a cool concept. It's not just something you say, wow, let's be sustainable together. It's not what it is. When we do have governments spending 11 and raising two, we, we're not governing sustainably. And I think that's the core element of what this disconnect is to the ideas that people have in terms of developing sustainability. Governments are not functioning appropriately. They're broken. I use the equipment all week. I've been talking about it's, it's amazing how our government of the United States of America is operating on like prodigy internet. You remember prodigy? AOL dial up. And I'm walking around 4G. I'm using internet 2.0 protocols. And yet, somehow, we don't have these models in governance supporting innovative ideas across our communities, let alone across the region. So we are still exporting 1950s technology to newly developing nations in the Americas so that they can produce electricity the way we did in the 50s. Doesn't make sense anymore. 
These models of thinking are outdated, and the models of government need to catch up to the models of actual real-time interactivity, and we know that because we represent this hope and this change for a, a different future. Sustainability also it feeds into this idea of economic development. And what do I mean by economic development? Let's redefine some terms. The future is global, but before we can become global citizens, we need to know how to be good neighbors. So imagine this, if you will, NAFTA, CAFTA, the biggest beneficiaries of political government policies that support free trade are corporations and maybe governments. Yet somehow individuals as the individual contract holder, free men and women who have power over our own labor, we somehow are not part of the movement of free trade. Now, that model is breaking daily because today, for example, I just confirmed a song that we produced internationally from Senegal, Nigeria, Honduras, and with me here in the States, and I hadn't visited any of these other countries. So my own talent now in the world market via the high-tech means of communication now give us the ability to be part of free trade as individual talent and labor holders. Well, that changes the dynamics of what migration will look like in the next 15 years. When a company leaves, you don't have to get stuck behind anymore. You can actually take your talents and your knowledge into the world community and find your way as you are developing yourself as your own career. That's the future of what free trade on the individual and community level look like. Redefining social capital. There was a book by Robert Putnam out from Massachusetts, and the book was Bowling Alone. And the book was talking about the deterioration or the transformation of social capital. In the United States, we do not value social capital. We do not value social capital investments and investors. This will change in the future. This must change. For example, it is a contribution to our society when someone writes songs. When poets speak truth to power, that's a contribution to the entire system of this ethnosphere that we all interact with and we share knowledge across. Well, I am telling you that the future is to now value the talents of individuals. So if you're an artist, you should be valued and you should not have to go give up your talent, give up your art to try to find a factory job somewhere just to make ends meet. If we want to use government to help promote the best ideas, let's truly change the way we interact with social capital investors and investments. And there's so many ideas in terms of how and what social capital investors are doing. Let us really give space and attention to what these things can mean to developing a sustainable future. And just on a, on a side note, anyone that's not with this conversation in terms of uh, this is too forward thinking or a little too radical, I have news for you. It doesn't matter. The world is changing faster than you and, and the small minds that might be prohibiting us unifying our knowledge and our culture and our eventual power. And that's the model of sustainability. That's why you talk to indigenous communities who have already the knowledge of climate adaptation measures for century and millennia. And that's why we need to integrate technology with traditional wisdom, developing a sustainable America. Integrated resource inventory management. I was confused when I read that and I wrote it. <laughs> but it came to me in a vision of an app. An app for iPhone and the other droid and other technological devices. And the idea is what if the community of changers, activists, artists, educators, what if we actually had real-time knowledge of who's doing what, where, and how we can collaborate with them now? So that imagine if you could pull out your iPhone, and because you know I'm in the room, you'd see a GPS blog of hip-hop ambassadors in the room. And you could find, oh, hey, I, I wanted to talk to you. I imagine sitting in a train, for example, and just pulling it out when I got off any stop in New York City and saying to myself, 
oh, I need to really find uh, an IT person right now who's down with creating social media campaigns. Or if I'm in Bolivia, in El Alto, working with the Kai Foundation and the, hip, and the highest hip hop community in the world, and it's not for drugs, it's for altitude. And I want to know, well, they want to know how they can connect to the global marketplace, how they can connect to the ideas and sharing. Now bring it back to sustainability. Bring it back to the individual. We actually have the ability now in the Global Block Foundation to connect talent to the world. And we're doing this around the world. So there's an artist in Guatemala, for example, in the city, uh, Guatemala City. I've never left Guatemala. They are rapping in Spanish. They're doing Spanish reggae. And yet, their talents are not positioned in a place where it could actually feed their family. So it's one thing to talk about, we all need to get high tech, and we all need to think about what the future looks like. And it's another thing to say, here are some tools that you can use, not in a paternalistic way of saying, we know what's best for you, but here are some tools that maybe we can show you how to use so that you can develop and, and grow your own future. And I use the word grow specifically, because for me, grow represents Grass roots organizing. This is a bottom-up approach, and it must be a bottom-up approach because I just critiqued the top approach, which is the government. They're, our governments are out of step with what's happening on the ground. It is a, a shame that globally the innovations that we know work are not being part, and they're not put into policy in sustainable ways. And it, it is a crisis globally but I focus us on the Americas because before we can be global citizens, we need to become good neighbors and we need to remember this. And I want to recap by bringing us back to hip hop. Everywhere I go, hip hop is there already. I'm an ambassador of hip hop, but we're not bringing hip hop to anybody. They already, they already have it and they're doing it and they're mixing it with their indigenous, local and traditional cultures. All they want to know is are they down with the community of global hip hop? So if I'm in Lima, Peru, two, three months ago, and they're like, you know, this is how I break dance. Look, I could pop lock, I could do a top rock, I know how to beatbox. Am I doing it right? And I tell them, you ain't doing it wrong. Anything you do is right. But they want to know if they're connected to the global community. That to me is the framework of the community of changers. Now, it doesn't have to be hip hop for you, it could be bluegrass, it could be jazz, it could be poetry, it could be visual, doesn't matter. The point is, bring them all together and you'll see the space for change. Whether it's bringing technology from the Arctic where they're leading innovations of sustainable renewable energy to indigenous communities who are doing off-grid uh, slope farming based initiatives down in Honduras. We see the ability to connect the dots and that's what Global Block stands for. And that's what the sustainable vision of sustainable Americas looks like from a global block perspective. Thank you for your time.